Hello guys, and welcome back to another edition of This Week in Sports with AJ McDaniel. Now this one's going to be a little bit drier and a little bit weaker because I'm doing it by myself, but nonetheless, we're going to be bringing you some of the most important stories of the week that happened of this week. So... For starters, let's kick back to all the way back last Sunday night. I know we missed out last week, but, you know, I have been picking the Patriots for a while ever since they had won against the Chiefs, and the Patriots did end up winning it out. Not the way I predicted. I predicted much more of a shootout and much more of an offensive battle than a defensive battle, but still... I had been saying the Patriots are going to win for quite some time, ask anybody who knows me. And I said so because, you know, Tom Brady's so good against, you know, certain teams and certain players. I think I said it in the in the week before the uh, Pro Bowl that the Patriots were going to win uh, after, we had reca- after we had recapped on the AFC Championship weekend, but let's just say everything, the thing that everybody's been thinking ever since the game was that was the most boring snooze fest of a Super Bowl ever. There were over eight punts per team, and it's just I don't know, it didn't feel like a Super Bowl to me and I don't know if you guys have felt the same way or if you felt completely different but oh my god it just felt like a terrible Sunday night football game and I really like I'm coming into this weekend almost ready like oh I wonder who's playing and then I'm like oh wait no one's playing and so it just didn't it didn't feel like a way to cap off the NFL season I feel like the Pro Bowl did a even did a much better job, and it's that's terrible uh, to think of, but it's true. I really much would have rather watched the pro, a rerun of the Pro Bowl than watch the Super Bowl, just because it was more entertaining. The Pro Bowl was so, but no, just Tom Brady won a sixth, and I don't think there's any more stopping him from being the greatest quarterback of all time, a god. Of quarterback, the quarterback god. Like when you think about your or your Mount Rushmore for quarterbacks, like he doesn't even get to go on that. He is just a different level of entity when you talk about him as a quarterback. I mean, it's just it's unrealistic for the man to be forty one winning a Super Bowl. I just and I and I hate that he wins so much. But one thing I really will say about Tom Brady, here and now, hold my feet to the fire, is that he's a great guy. I really, like, if there was anybody who was to win six Super Bowls, Brady's the kind of guy that was to win six Super Bowls. He's a great guy. He's a fantastic dude. You know, yeah, he gets competitive and he gets, you know, aggressive. But, like, he's a great, he's a great guy. Just... There's not much else to say about the Super Bowl and just how just terrible that game was. And I I can't I cannot say anything but the Chiefs Saints Super Bowl would have been a billion times better. And that's just facts. That's just pure facts. I think even a Patriots Saints Super Bowl would have been a million times better. But a Chiefs Saints Super Bowl would have been billions of times better. So you know, hopeful for next year. Uh, at some point during the off season, I may get a few guys around me, and we'll start talking about who we who we predict is going to win the Super Bowl next year. But for right now, we'll just we'll just bask in this uh, crap fest that was the the Super Bowl Fifty Three, which will go down as the lowest scoring Super Bowl in NFL history, and just be a pitiful pitiful shame. Moving around the sports spectrum, I guess, we're going to talk about NFL trade week. Uh, This was the last week for the trades. Uh, Trade deadline hit on Thursday night or Thursday afternoon or whatever hit on Thursday. Uh, For those of you who don't know, and we're going to talk about the top 10 trade deals. Now, the biggest story of the trade season, I guess, would be that Crit Stops Przingis was kicked from New York. New York opened up their power forward slot for maybe a potential Kevin Durant. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't know things. You know, I'm just. I like that skip. I like that old Skip Bayless line where he always says, "I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know." Even though he'll make like an absolute 
judgment call and be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But no, yeah, I'm thinking uh, the Mavericks got a pretty good deal, to be honest. Getting rid of Dennis, Dennis, Smith, shoot, uh, Dennis Smith Jr., the tongue twister, DeAndre Jordan and Wesley Matthews. And the Knicks also got two future first-round picks. I think that's pretty solid deal. You know, getting rid of Kristaps Porzingis, Tim Hardaway, Courtney Lee, Trey Burke. I mean, the only guy out here that I would have even had a problem with getting rid of outside of Kristaps would have been Courtney Lee. But he hasn't been producing ever since, you know, he left. I think it was uh, Memphis uh, back like th- two, when he was playing in Memphis two or three years ago, four years ago now. Maybe five. Jeez. A long time ago was the last time he was actually really any good. Tim Hardaway Jr., he's he's okay, but he was he's not – I think getting him out of New York's a pretty good idea. His career may – he may have a chance to re, reproduce his career uh, down in Dallas, but I don't know. But, no, getting rid of Chris Stops, that's a big one for New York right now. If they're trying to bring in Zion Williamson and Kevin Durant over the off season. I mean, New York's trying to rebuild, and I think they've done a pretty good job in positioning themselves. Right now, I think they have the number one overall pick right now. And if they don't end up with the number one overall pick, then they have several first-round picks, future first-round picks, to trade away to get that first-round pick. Because Zion Williamson will be a game-changer in New York, and I think it's going to be a big one. The 76ers did some stuff that I I wasn't a big fan of. Now, the 76ers are on this list twice. There, there's a – on a CBS.com, CBSSports.com, there's a list of the top ten. You can go see where all this stuff is. But but I'm, I'm looking at a few of these, and I know the Sixers are on here at least twice. I think they're just on here. Yeah, they're just on here twice. But I am really just not a big fan of either one of their trades – Getting, they went in and got Tobias Harris to round out their top five. So another top five sits with uh, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris. Oh, what's the what's... – J.J. Redick. There he is. And uh, I don't even know who their shooting guard is. Maybe Marjanovic or it may be – or no, it's uh, – Maybe Jonathan Simmons. I don't know. I don't know who their sh- who their shooting guard is right now. I can't. Or their uh, yeah, who their sh- point guard is right now. I don't know, because they got rid of Mark Hill, Fultz, and Landry Shamit. So getting and they, and they traded Landry Shamit for Tobias Harris. I just don't. I just don't like that. You know, you got. I I've never been a big Tobias Harris fan. Now let's get that out of the air. out of the air. let's clear the air with that either, like first. Uh when he was at Detroit, I thought he was kind of just like the best player in Detroit, but I mean that's like being the best player on a middle school team. Like it doesn't matter. Like you like you're like, "Oh, he's such he's the best player on his little squad amongst his little friends." And it's that's nothing. That's it's that's like literally being that's being homecoming king at your homeschool dance. I mean, it's really just – it's really not a big accomplishment. Sorry to any high homeschool kids that listen to this, but it's just not a big thing. It's not a real big deal. So, I don't know. Maybe Tobias Harris gets a pretty – like comes in and re – and kind of takes them to the next level. So, I don't know. It's just kind of a – it's just kind of like – they, they they had a good squad, and now they're looking at going all in for this year. I think they had a good squad to come in. If they were to work with Markel, for, Ful, Markel Fultz and Landry Shamit, that could be a pair of guys who come in, and once J.J. Redick moves out, Landry Shamit could go to the point guard and Markel Fultz could go to the two guard if he fixed his jump shot. Uh, and kind of got better with his shooting, he could have kind of taken that spot over, and you could have like a real good young starting five. I mean, even if you bring in Tobias Harris some other way, or even if you don't, and you just stick with your guy, uh, was it? I think it was Wilson Chandler was there three right now, or maybe it was someone else. No, yeah, I think it was 
Wilson Chandler. But if you just stick with your three, if you stick with your current three, even though he's not a, a real big player, he could be something. And so, I don't know. It's just really – they traded away a lot of their young – talent and I mean they got they also got rid of their 2020 first round pick their 2021 first round pick from Miami and then they also got rid of two of their very of their own second round picks so I mean if this is not preparing for this year if this isn't just selling out for this year I don't know what else you could say it is besides the Lakers which we'll get to them in a minute and how they were complete idiots for doing everything that they had said they were going to do this year sorry I wish we for Mike but um Mark Gasol getting sent away from the Grizzlies. I really, I really don't like that. Mark Gasol had kind of become a staple of the Memphis Grizzlies franchise over the past what has it been six, seven, eight years that he's been playing there. So, I think that the 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 Grizzlies kind of getting rid of Mark Gasol. That's a rough one, but they did get good value back. Jonas Valanciunas, C.J. Miles, a second round pick in twenty twenty four. Those are some good players, but LeBron James had sent out a tweet a few days ago whenever the uh, the the Mavericks traded, uh, I think it was Dennis Smith Jr., when they traded him away in the middle of a game. LeBron James kind of was like, 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 literally, it was, like, the third quarter dude got benched for the rest of the game because he got traded to somewhere else. I think it was the Knicks. It might have been the Kings. Let me see which one it was. I think it was the Kings. Oh, no, Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes got traded in, like, the literal middle of the game. And he kind of got benched for the rest of the game. And that was really, really stupid. They should have at least waited till after the game or something. But but LeBron James made a text out about how there's no real player loyalty to teams. And I think the Marcus All trade kind of envisions that the same way. There's not a lot of teams that are loyal to players if they're not. And I understand it's a it's a business. You got to win. You got to put in players who are going to put you in a position to win. But for a player who's stuck with you for so long, I mean, Marc Gasol has been the staple of the franchise that's gotten them to several playoffs. I mean, yeah, they may only be sneaking in as the eighth, seventh, or fifth seed over the past ten over the past ten years, but Marc Gasol has been like the biggest part of that, leading the team in like rebounds, blocks, points in the paint. I mean, he's doing all the things the center should do, but he's doing them really well. And Marc Gasol has a is a multi. I think he's like a four or five six time all-star i mean michael conley isn't even like a six isn't even like a five time all-star i think this is i don't even think he's in the all-star lineup this year i'll see that in a minute but we'll get to that later too but i think mark gasol is just a player you don't want to leave you don't want to abandon a player like that especially if he's been in your franchise for like a really long time and i'm a little bit more sentimental because i'm more of a kind of guy who likes who likes long stories i mean like like how would have anybody have felt if the lakers traded kobe if the Lakers if the Lakers would have traded Kobe, how do you feel that would have gone? Because there were times, especially in the and near the end of his of Kobe's career, that Kobe wasn't even doing nothing. Kobe wasn't being an all star. He wasn't doing this, but he was just being him. He was just like he just his name got him to stay on the Lakers squad for so long. Mark Gasol, he may not have the same name, but he has the same ability. He has the same amount of impact on the on the on the franchise that he should have been at least allowed to finish out his career there if he cho- if he so chose if he so chose so i mean like you got to think about it how would how would the Mavericks feel about trading away Dirk Nowitzki how would you know just guys who are staples of one franchise like and and that's the thing is that today you're seeing a lot more of that cuz like Blake Griffin was a big one he was like the staple of the Clippers, but now he's in Detroit. Uh, Chris Stapps was a staple of the Knicks, but now he's in Dallas. You know, James Harden has become the staple of Houston. What if he gets traded away to somewhere else too? So I don't know. 
and and I also know, I also understand trying to get value for a guy before he just retire up and retires, um, and before his his trade value completely is just nothing. But I just I'm not a fan of getting rid of a guy who wants to stay. So that's just that's just a personal thing with me. But I don't know. I, the trade deadline always brings out my kind of – it gives me my feels in a way because people will make crazy trades to, to satisfy building up a, – a, almost like a, try to build a stronger team. And with that said – Let's talk about the Lakers and how they almost ruined their entire franchise and how getting Anthony Davis on a trade like they made would literally have ruined their entire team. So for anybody who didn't see the uh, trade, basically the Lakers were willing to get rid of Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, and oh, was it Josh Hart? I think it was Josh Hart. And get rid of three, two or three first of the next first round picks. That's the dumbest thing I think I've ever heard. Now don't get me wrong, Anthony Davis, great player, absolutely fantastic player. He's a multi-time All Star. Uh, and will continue to be. I mean, the the man's only twenty five right now. He's going to be twenty six coming up this year. He's going to turn twenty six this year. But oh my god, the dude is not worth the future of your franchise because he's not going to build. He's not going to by himself bring in a championship. Putting just Le- just putting LeBron James and Anthony Davis on the same team isn't going to automatically guarantee a championship. I mean, and because you need facilitators. And don't get me wrong, Rondo is a good player. Rondo's a great facilitator. I think Rondo's the real reason back uh, when Boston beat my LeBron for the championship. Rondo is probably the biggest reason they did that. Because Rondo was able to move the ball to, Ray, to players like Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett. You know, dish it down low, dish it up to the sides. He, he was able to drive the lane and handle his own too. And knock down a three as we saw when the Lakers put that, uh, when Rondo put that, dagger through the Celtics heart last night against the Lakers when the Lakers were playing the Celtics he put a dagger through their heart last uh last night so and so he could hit a three but it's not his main game his main game is passing the ball away but even then you still need a guy I mean what is LeBron James average right now 30 28 points Anthony Davis probably averages about 25 24 maybe less both of those maybe less I don't even know but you have a guy who scores, let's say that even if LeBron James and Anthony Davis both scored 30 points a night and they continue to somehow do so when you mix them together in the same team, that's only 60 guaranteed points a night. That doesn't even beat out some team's first half production. There are teams that will score 60 points in a first half. And that's what these guys are going to score for a game. So you need people around like Brandon Ingram, who's been putting up putting up numbers. Kyle Kuzma, who's always putting up numbers. Andrew, uh, I don't, is it Andrew? No, Javale McGee. My bad. Javale McGee down low. Yeah, he scores a little bit too, about ten to ten, eight to ten, twelve points a night. But I mean, it's nothing big, and that only puts him up to like 72, 75. You need another guy to come in and be scoring at an average of twenty a night, thirty a night. You need guys who are producing a whole hell of a lot more than Rondo is right now, or the ba- other of the other older guys on the team are. And then on top of that, like I said, Rondo's getting up there. Some of the other guys in the squad are getting up there. So when you talk about having some draft picks, you need to have some draft picks when, you know, guys move on. And you gotta fill their shoes. I mean, you're not gonna always be able to. You're you're not always gonna be able to count on free agency. Now, yeah. Obviously, if you're in the league, you got some skills, you got some talent, you got some ability. But 
it doesn't mean you're going to be able to win. You got to be able to outplay the best of the best if you want to go win a championship. Now, even if you know, even though people will say, "Well, LeBron James will be able to handle all that," he can't. LeBron just you can't just count on LeBron to lead you through everything. Because look what happened when the the Cavaliers tried to do that the first time the Cavaliers and Warriors met in the in the finals. Kyrie Irving got hurt. Kevin Love got hurt. They were using Matthew Della Vadova and some other backup guys who were absolute garbage. And look what happened. Got kicked out of the got knocked out of the finals pretty easily. I think it was in five games. It was four to one. That whole series ended up being four to one. And then they come back next year. The Cavs have players like Kyrie, Kevin Love, guys like that who could help them out. Tristan Thompson steps into comes into his own. And guess what? They go out, win the championship. Now, yeah, Warriors kind of kicked them out of the kicked the crap out of them the past two after the past two years, but still, you put people, you put dudes. But that was whenever they added Kevin Durant, and you really just have no idea how to even combat combat that. So, but you got guys. You need guys around LeBron. LeBron can't just be himself and win the game you need guys around him so putting just trying to get anthony davis in this situation is not good now if anybody saw though whenever the right after the lakers had made this trade earlier this week did you guys see how the lakers Team, how the Lakers young players like Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, and all those guys responded. There was so much controversy between them, LeBron, and the and the higher ups. They ended up getting absolutely dismantled, and a lot of people. And I'm what I'm thinking right now. Call me a conspiracy theorist, whatever. I think the Pelicans were literally just trying to shop Anthony Davis around to see what he's worth. I'm looking at Anthony Davis's contract right now. I thought. His contract ran out this year, and that if they didn't trade him away right now or by the end of the summer, he's going to be on his own. He's going to be walking away. But that's not true. Anthony Davis still has a guaranteed year on his contract. Now, if Anthony Davis decides to blow, what would it be? He'd have to blow, I think it's almost $20 million. No, because he's got two possible years. I don't know if it's a team. I don't know if it's team oriented or not. But over the next two years, he's guaranteed about fifty-five million. He'd have to pay in order to buy out that contract. I do think he needed to pay thirty to forty million dollars. So he could pay thirty or forty million dollars and and buy out his own contract to hopefully go get a bigger contract with the Lakers. But I don't think he'll do it. And I think what it's looking at right now, what I'm looking at right now, is I'm seeing that, that the New Orleans Pelicans had no intention ever of trading uh, Anthony Davis this year. I don't think they had any intention of doing it. I think they were just kind of using it as a, oh, well, what if? And what they were doing is they were seeing, okay, well, we're not going to trade him this year, but next year we're going to trade him. And now here's the thing is that I'm a big fan of – now I know I've, I now I'm going to say something that kind of contradicts myself. I'm a big fan of getting rid of players who aren't coming back. All right? So like if you got like Marcus Gasol, like I said, he, he was never intending on just walking away or even just retiring. He had no intention of that. He's going to play for a few more years. But you kick him out. Anthony Davis, he's out here like, I want to trade. I'm not like, well, we're not going to trade. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, we ain't going to trade you. We want to stay loyal to you, so we're going to keep you around until your contract's up, and then you can just walk away. No. If they do want to walk away, trade them. Get rid of them. Go away. Get out of my face. Don't ever come back. That's how, that's how I really feel about that. But And so and if, and if what it's going to be is I'm going to get you know a couple picks for you, or I'm going to get a, a younger player for you, and that guy's going to become into my team, and I'm going to... Work it out. And I'm going to be having a good player. So what I'm thinking that the Pelicans are about to do is they saw the options. They saw their options. They're going to kind of hold on to them. They'll probably, the beginning of next uh, NBA season in 2019, or in, like, it is 2019, 
the beginning of uh, the season in September and October, they'll probably walk into the season saying we are op- they're open to trades uh, for Anthony Davis and will honestly seriously consider trades. And it'll probably be a it'll probably be a little bit, a little bit less than what they were getting offered this year. But I think you'll see an Anthony Davis trade probably by November, late December, early December. It won't come down to the wire like it did this year. They won't come down to February saying, "I guess we'll start taking him." No, it'll it'll be like early, early in the season next year, next season. So that'll be that'll be pretty. That'll move him out quickly, and that'll put him in a spot where, yeah, he may not be happy this year, but he'll be happy, you know, next year. So it'll be fun. And last but not least, the NBA All-Star Games coming up this, uh, I don't think it's this week, it's obviously not this weekend, but I think it's coming up, I think it's either next weekend or the following weekend, but it's coming up soon. The draft was this week, I do believe, yeah, the draft was February 7th, wait, huh? Oh, the All-Star Games February 17th. The draft, I don't remember, I don't know when the draft was. I know it was this week though, because I'm looking at the full rosters. So, and now we're looking at the reserves and the everything. The draft happened. So, LeBron James picked up Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, little buddy, Kawhi Leonard, and James Harden for his starters. Putting in a good mix of uh, three-point shooters and, pretty much that's it, three-point shooters. That's basically what he's got. Uh, Giannis ended up getting Steph, Joel Embiid, Paul George, and Kimba Walker. So, he got more of a rim protect and more of a defensive minded with him and you him and joel uh paul george steph and kemba kemba i don't like that kemba walker was a all-star selection but i understand why he was but i just think that that kind like i know right now LeBron James got first pick because he didn't end up with kemba walker no one wanted kemba walker kemba walker Kimball Walker isn't that great. I mean, he's just not that good. So he's not all-star starter material, in my opinion. So I think that really he's only in this because it's the Charlotte's. Charlotte's hosting it this year. So I don't know. I just, like, so Giannis really got Steph. He really wanted Steph, Joel Embiid, and Paul George, and he got left with Kimba Walker. So I feel bad for him in that way. But uh, for reserves, LeBron James, obviously with the first overall pick, chose Anthony Davis. He also picked up Klay Thompson, Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons, LaMarcus Aldridge, Carl Anthony Towns, Bradley Beal, and Dwayne Wade. Good old buddy there, too. Uh, he didn't really get any teammates to work with his main guys. He got Clay and uh, Kevin Durant. That's about the only guys he really got that are on the same team. So Steph's going to be out on his own this week uh, That in that game. But uh, for the Bucks, Giannis chose his teammate, Chris Middleton. He took Yoke, Nikola Jokic, Blake Griffin, Russell Westbrook, Angelo, D'Angelo Russell, Nikola Vucevic, Kyle Lowry, and Dirk Nowitzki. So I don't know. It was a pretty solid lineup there, but... I think that you're going to see, whenever these two teams play, you're going to see the uh, the captain's respected style, uh, in my opinion. LeBron James, much more of a scorer. So he took, you know, the Anthony Davis, Clay Thompson, Damian Lillard, the guys who score a lot. I mean, the, the biggest defensive-minded guy he got was Carl Anthony Towns. That's, I think, the only defensive-minded guy he really got. Ben Simmons is much more an offensive guy. Lillard's offense. Thompson, obviously offense. He plays for Golden State. Davis, I mean, he's been the main scorer in New Orleans for the past year. But for Giannis, for Antetokounmpo, he got, you know, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Blake Griffin, Nikola Vucevic, uh, Dirk Nowitzki, guys who are kind of relying on their defense nowadays. Dwayne Wade even, I mean, he's still trying to be, he's still out there shooting the ball at a high clip, putting up crazy shots. I mean, the dude's dude's still doing really well. So I think you're going to see the respective styles of each captain in this uh, All-Star game. 
and I think it's going to be really fun to see who wins out a battle of offense versus defense. Uh, and how much can defense turn into offense? And how well can LeBron James's offensive team keep them from scoring on the defensive side? So, prediction-wise, I think the Eastern Conference is going to win this year just because... I like defense. I like I like to favor defense. In my opinion, defense has a better chance of doing more, I guess. So it's just that it's just that the defense is a, the defense is a way of stopping you from scoring. If you're just trying to outrun each other, it's stupid. It, it's just like whenever they first did this and uh Giannis dunked on Steph Curry like twice and then Steph Curry got stolen like he tried to pass the ball up and it got stolen from the guy and then legitimately Steph Curry just laid down on the free throw line and the dude legit jumped over him from like the free throw line and dunked the crap out of it that was insane but you get situations like that and no one really cares it's like it's like why am I even watching this if it's just going to be an offensive battle there's not going to be any it's like because literally then it'll be like what happened when uh when anthony davis won all-star game mvp and the dude put up like 56 points it's like ridiculous and what's the point of even trying to stop it like no one was even trying to stop him from scoring because once they got inside it was just like whatever take your layup like the dude made fit may have had 56 points but all that means to me was he just had 28 layups that were just uncontested. What's the point? How is how is that even anything? That's not even a scrimmage. So I don't know. Like, I think that Giannis building a defensive-minded team is going to be a lot better. And it's going to prove that it's going to take it's going to make his team have the advantage. So that's just what I think about that. Uh so that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope that you stay warm and that you have everything all right. And I'll see you next week for another edition. Bye-bye.